So this viral TikTok video makes viewers question why people live in New York City. Is this a health hazard? So let's get right into it because I thought it would be pretty interesting, a pretty interesting real estate video. So what's the point of an open house if you can't open the door to enter the house? A brief TikTok video posted this week has gone viral with more than 2.2 million views as of Friday afternoon by showing a dark side of New York City living. By the way, I have no clue why people live in New York City because it's just so expensive. The taxes are so high. The crime is so high. You're basically living like roaches and rats with other people. Like, why? Why are you spending so much money to live such a crappy lifestyle? So in this case... That's paying an arm and a leg for a unit that, beyond its allegedly hefty asking price, has an entirely different barrier to entry. So, Reality of New York City Apartment Hunting and the Absurd Prices wrote the user named Charlotte with the handle at Charlotte Around. Charlotte's around in the clip. The video shows her trying to open the front door, which can't fully swing wide. And about 45 degrees into the door opening, it hits the handle of a stove, seemingly standing mere inches away, and the impact makes it shake. She then squeezes herself through the door frame, opening it as far as it can go to reveal the rest of the kitchen, oddly installed in what ought to be a foyer to the left of that oven. There's half size dishwasher, a sink, hardly any counter space, and barely any floor space to maneuver. Imagine paying $4,000 per month to get whacked with the door anytime you use the stove and someone comes home, she added. Yeah, $4,000 per month for an apartment. That's crazy. And you can't even open the door. So Charlotte, who later says she was on tour of this unit, did not respond to a request for comment. It isn't clear where in the city this apartment is located. The clip, which got more than 175,000 likes, also amassed more than 1,300 comments, very few of which are positive. Imagine wanting to live in New York City, wrote one, while another wrote, cooking and the roommate walks in, just third degree burns. Let's see. So this person says, LL, I work for the Department of Housing Preservation and Development and am almost certain there are some housing code violations in that apartment. Let me know because that was my first thought when I walked in. Others question the practicality of living in a space where the front door is obstructed by a major appliance. How are you supposed to move furniture in as another? I guess we're all well, I guess we're just packing a fork. Meanwhile, others questioned the legality of this layout. One user who identified as an employee of the city's Department of Housing Prevention and Development said they were almost certain there are some housing code violations in that apartment. Bum, 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 bum. So the video shows that is what it's like to try to turn around in the narrow kitchen and to head to the rest of the unit, which appears to be a tiny studio. Isn't this like a health hazard, she said, adding in the comments. I wish I included what the agent said. It's definitely inconvenient. Also inconvenient is the general state of the city's rental market. Around this time last year, when rents continued to plunge to record lows, a number of locos upgraded, sometimes scoring more space for the same price they paid elsewhere or even less. But around the fall of 2021, those sweet deals vanished and some tenants faced rent hikes as much as 79% more per month to renew. Now that's insane. And more recently, New Yorkers looking to rent a new home at a time when many local officials have reopened, at least partially, have faced bidding wars to secure leases which have only driven prices higher and available units have also drawn large crowds for open houses and that comes at a time when rental housing inventory has fallen quite low. I just imagine that for a second. Now, is there any comments? Ooh, there is. I lived in New York from 1968 until 1988 and loved every minute of it. There's absolutely no way I would want to live there now if for no other reason than all the little interesting neighborhoods are now one big homogenized mass mess. It's inconceivable that anybody could live in an apartment like the one mentioned here. It reminds me of my guinea pig's cage. It was a lot of fun then, but I couldn't put it up, put up with it today. 
So this other person put, it actually had character back then. For all of its flaws, I was proud to be from New York City. Not anymore. I'm glad I moved out of that trash can. Proud to be born and raised there, but it was time to go. When you're paying $2,500 a month for rent or paying, how much is that? $700,000 for a house, even in a garbage neighborhood, when you still fear your safety, then you know it's time to go. Then on top of that, since everyone is a renter these days, there is no sense of communities anymore. Not to mention that you pay so much money just to live in trash or next door to trash. I always tell people come to visit, but don't come to stay. People are willing to compromise because as the jazz musicians used to say, there are many apples in the tree, but when you're in New York, you're in the big apple. Just be very careful when and where you walk been there and didn't lose a thing that would make me want to return. That city no longer exists. Let's see. Comments talking up filthy, crime ridden expensive New York City reminds me of those selling Bitcoin. Me, I'll live where the air is clean, the traffic is light, and the costs are low, and the people don't try to kill every time I leave my house. But it's only place like it in the U.S., an urban walkable city with tons to do, and the social life hooking up is convenient and second to none. This person says, no, it isn't. New York City hasn't become any city USA with nothing but tall buildings to distinguish it from most other cities. New York has become a fake tourist city like Jamestown or Williamsburg, VA, and all the character has been whitewashed right out of New York, and I do mean whitewashed. Liberals here love forcing the elderly and poor black communities to move and make way for more white people. De Blasio wanted to relocate hundreds living in public housing because the area has become popular with young white Google employees. And sorry, but if you think you're having more sex than people living in rural America, you have never been to rural America. New York used to be a dynamic metropolis, but that city no longer exists. Now the draw is that you can have a cappuccino in your safe place. This other person put, I personally hope that all New York City dwellers stayed there. Since the final days of 2020, when so many moved to other states, those former city dwellers are systematically ruining everywhere they go. They want to foist their liberal ways upon us and recreate the very problems they had in New York City. This can't be more noticeable than along Florida's east and southeast coast. Please stay in your city. This is the reason why people question why people live there, not the rampant crime, filth, decay, and everything being run by Marxists, LOL. The freedom to spend your money how you see fit is a great one indeed. Welcome to New York City. Pay outrageous rent to live like people lived 100 years ago. LOL. I'll pass. Thanks. New York City, expensive all around and a long list of other factors that are annoying and concerning. However, I feel it is necessary to defend the city I love. The video that's gone viral is in no way representative of what's on the market as a whole. In my famous Hell's Kitchen doorman high-rise, you can get a nice studio for 3 k per month or less, and not everyone needs a doorman. Sounds to me like a combination of an opportunistic landlord and a renter who hasn't looked hard enough. Moreover, if New York City matches your personality, it is worth every penny. Subjective? Sure. But I have lived here for 18 years in a 400 square foot studio, 14 years with two different girlfriends, and space has never been an issue. Because thankfully, we liked each other and made sensible space saving decisions along the way. Bigger picture, my our home isn't that uh, isn't the apartment. It's both the 400 square feet and also every inch from 42nd to 57th and 8th and to 10th. That is home pretty big. I've lived many places, but nothing compares to New York City when it comes to the convenient access and sheer volume of genuine people. The near daily, can't make this up, fun that springs out of nowhere, often with total strangers, and the diversity in number of friends and acquaintances that's equivalent to the sitcom Cheers, but instead of a bar, it's a neighborhood where everybody knows your name, which includes all the bars, the energy, the people, the fun, the memories, unparalleled heart NYC. So that person definitely is defending you know, their home. But here's the thing that people need to understand. Regardless of where you choose to live, regardless of how much it costs you to live in a certain area, within the state, within the country, and all that kind of stuff, or even in the world, it's all about your personal preference, right? Like, if you're someone that doesn't really care for, like, that much space in a living situation, but you want easy access in terms of like walking around to like different stores, shopping, 
nightclubs, all that kind of stuff, yeah, sure, New York City might be a viable option to you. And you're probably going to be okay with there being a lot more chances of you getting robbed or potentially worse in those types of areas. Because if you want easy access to all these different things, then you're going to have easy access in terms of crime as well. So it's all about personal perspective and personal preference, right? Like what you may like may not be what another person might like or what be, what they may or may not be willing to put up with. So it's just something to really think about. So feel free to give your thoughts on this. I thought this was pretty interesting. Personally, I can't justify spending 4K per month on a small apartment, regardless of where it is. That's my personal preference. I'm a person that would rather live in the country, somewhat small house or maybe even a bigger house, but with a lot of land compared to like in a city with high rises or with high crime in basically no space. Like I don't like feeling like I'm part of a rat pack, basically. So feel free to give your thoughts. If you want to learn how to get a debt, go to 40 